What is the best dose of topical finasteride? Is there a dose that maximizes our hair gains and minimizes our side effects? Do higher doses get better regrowth while still protecting us from side effects versus oral formulations? We're going to answer all of these questions and more in this updated video. If you're new to this channel, my name is Rob English. I am a consumer advocate. I'm a published researcher who specializes in hair loss disorders. I'm on the editorial board of a dermatology journal, and I run the website Perfect Hair Health. We aim to make hair loss less overwhelming and to give you practical, unbiased insights so that you can start saving time, money, and most importantly, your hair. Today, we are tackling a huge question that comes up all the time. What is the best dose of topical finasteride? Is there a sweet spot dose that maximizes hair gains and also minimizes our side effects? And if we switch to a higher dose, does that allow for better hair regrowth while also still protecting us from the side effects of oral finasteride? We're gonna dive into the data, the unknowns, and the available doses so that you can start making more informed treatment decisions. For background, finasteride is a drug that inhibits 5-alpha reductase. That is the enzyme that converts testosterone into dihydrotestosterone, also called DHT. And DHT is the hormone that causes androgenic alopecia, also known as pattern hair loss. Studies show that oral finasteride, if you take it at 1 milligram per day, can lower DHT by more than 60%, and it can also slow, stop, or partially reverse hair loss for about 80 to 90% of men. However, the drug also causes sexual side effects, often in the form of low libido or sexual dysfunction, which is why many people turn to the topical formulations. The idea is that by using the topical, they can localize the effects of this DHT lowering drug to the scalp rather than the whole body and still get the same hair regrowth benefits. And you can't blame people for thinking this. After all, clinical studies do show that in target area hair zones, topical finasteride is nearly as effective as oral finasteride. But as we will soon see, the dose matters a great deal. And the idea that we can localize finasteride's effects to just the scalp, it doesn't always work, especially at the doses sold to you by major telehealth brands. Based on clinical studies, I really see two distinct dosing categories for topical finasteride, low dose and standard strength. We'll evaluate both of these depending on their levels of hair regrowth, their systemic absorption, and their side effect risk. First, we have low dose topical finasteride. That is anything from 0.005% to 0.01% applied daily, typically one to two milliliters per day. That works out to about 0.05 to 0.2 milligrams of finasteride exposure per day on the scalp. And that's just a fraction of the standard one milligram oral dose that you would take. Right now, this topical formulation, it appears to be the minimum effective dose. It's the lowest dose of topical finasteride that, according to one clinical study, improves hair parameters, and it does so without altering blood levels of DHT, at least during that 16 month window of treatment. This is important because blood DHT levels, they're a really good way to approximate how much topical finasteride is actually leaking from our scalps into our circulatory system, where it would then travel and impact DHT levels elsewhere in the body. Because it's really this DHT reduction in places like the eyes, the brain, or even the testes that likely cause off-target effects for finasteride, not DHT reductions in the scalp. And the only way for a topical finasteride to get there is it first has to leak into the bloodstream and then travel through the blood to reach those organ sites. So DHT in the blood is kind of like the canary in the coal mine. It's a very sensitive barometer no DHT changes there, then it's unlikely that you'll see DHT changes in other organ sites where the blood travels, like here, here, or here, and that should have some protection against side effect risk. So knowing that, low-dose topical finasteride, it's probably best for people who want to minimize systemic effects from the drug while also still getting some hair benefits. It's also probably better for people who maybe got side effects from higher topical or oral doses of finasteride and who really need to limit their systemic exposure. If that is you, then great. Maybe give this dose a try. And if you want, you can make low-dose finasteride at home. Just use the topical finasteride calculator that we built. To access it, check out the links below. It's 100% free. You can crush up finasteride pills and mix them into a solvent of your choice, or you can dilute a previously purchased topical finasteride into another solvent, and again, select the dilution that you'd like. But with this approach, you have to know that the dosing accuracy and the stability might be challenging. Alternatively, if you are in the US, there is now finally a telehealth brand that offers this formulation 
combination of low dose topical finasteride, at least to qualifying candidates. It's offered through a brand that I co-founded and it's called Ulo. Ulo's medical providers can assess your hair and help you determine if low dose topical finasteride might be right for you. And the formulations offered, they've gone through months and months and months of building, testing, iterating, and improving. They apply really easily, they dry quickly, they penetrate the scalp, and most importantly, they're devoid of irritants like propylene glycol. So if you're interested in that assessment, visit the links below. And if you are going to try low-dose topical finasteride, keep in mind some important details. First, even at low doses, topical finasteride, it can still go systemic. Studies show that finasteride, it has this logarithmic dose-dependent effect on DHT reduction. So in other words, if just a tiny amount of the drug enters the bloodstream, it can cause a huge drop in blood DHT levels, often on par with that of oral finasteride. We've even seen this reflected in members of our community, some of whom have done blood tests before and during their use of low-dose topical finasteride. And so far, it seems about half of people are reporting no changes to blood DHT after starting the topical, which is really exciting. That's what the study suggests. But the other half do report significant DHT drops. We're talking 35, 45, sometimes even 70% declines. So for some users, there is this discrepancy between the results of the clinical study, but the experience of real world people trying that low dose topical. So why might this be the case? Well, if I were to guess, it's because again, it just takes a tiny amount of finasteride to leak into the blood to reduce serum DHT by almost as much as oral finasteride. And when you start accounting for all factors that influence the absorption levels of topical finasteride, so we're talking the delivery vehicles used, the milliliters applied, the scalp contact time before you wash it out every night, the use of other ingredients or therapies that might increase skin penetration of topicals, we're talking retinoic acid, we're talking microneedling, you end up with a lot of individual variants, especially in uncontrolled environments like the real world. So if this matters to you, maybe do blood DHT testing before and during your use of low-dose topical finasteride. That'll really, really help to estimate your systemic absorption levels, and then you can always adjust up or down based on those results. And if you're interested in directions on how to do this, check out our earlier video on topical finasteride for a step-by-step -step guide on how to test your DHT. The next thing is that it's worth mentioning that low-dose topical finasteride may also lead to less regrowth than higher concentrations. For a proxy example, just look at oral finasteride. Daily doses of 0.2, 1, and 5 milligrams, those all basically reduce the same amount of blood DHT. Just see these dosing charts. But as the dose gets higher, up until about 5 milligrams, the regrowth actually gets directionally better. The same relationship might also exist with certain doses of topical finasteride. And we also see this somewhat reflected in our members. The lower doses, they work for a lot of people, they do remain better localized, but there is another level of regrowth that awaits individuals who switch to the higher strength formulations. So you have to keep these dynamics in mind as you're weighing your dosing options. Next up, we have standard dose topical finasteride, typically in the range of 0.1 to 0.3%. At this dose, you're looking at 0.5 milligrams all the way up to six milligrams daily of finasteride exposure. That is a huge range with the upper end representing six times more finasteride than the standard dose of the oral one milligram daily usage point. These formulations, they're probably most appropriate for people who want more noticeable hair regrowth but who are also comfortable with that topical finasteride going systemic. Because with doses this high, we can virtually guarantee that you're going to see a blood DHT reduction almost on par with oral finasteride. So in that respect, you might be wondering, well, why don't I just use oral finasteride? It's cheaper, it's easier to use, and if you're already tanking your blood DHT, then why would you make the switch? In fact, this is an argument that we levied in our video about Brian Johnson's dose of topical finasteride. But there is some evidence that even a standard dose of topical finasteride, it could lower the risk of side effects compared to oral finasteride. We've also seen this reflected in certain members. You've seen a case of it with our video on Alessandro. I'll link that below. I'll walk you through the science and you can decide if you buy the argument or not. It's still up for debate. For topical finasteride, there are two markers that we can use to gauge our side effect risks. The first is blood DHT levels. We've discussed these already. They're the first marker to start to go out of whack with systemic leakage. They're the canaries in the coal mine. But the second marker might actually be more important. That's circulating levels of finasteride in the blood. The amount of finasteride that hasn't gotten used up or interacted with components of the blood and is now traveling and getting transported 
in the blood where it's going to get deposited in other organ sites. Again, the brains, the eyes, the testes, where it's going to start lowering DHT levels in those organ sites, not the blood. And again, those organ sites, that's most likely where the real risk of side effects from finasteride comes from. The side effects probably aren't coming from scalp DHT reductions, not blood DHT reductions, but instead DHT reductions in these off target organ sites. A study out of Italy, it tested a 0.25% topical finasteride spray and applied doses totaling, according to our estimates, potentially up to 0.9 milligrams per day. In that study, topical finasteride users, they saw blood DHT level declines by almost as much as they would with the oral medication. So again, there's no shocker there. But there was something interesting that the researchers noted. Topical finasteride users saw circulating levels of finasteride that were just 1 100th to 1 200th that of the oral finasteride users. That is a huge, huge difference. And again, that is the amount of finasteride that's traveling through the blood and will eventually reach other tissue sites and have a DHT reducing effect there. So you might argue that at levels that low, perhaps DHT reductions in these organ sites, they might not be as severe as if you were on oral finasteride, even despite the blood DHT levels declining quite substantially. And so maybe these standard strength topical finasteride formulations, perhaps they do offer some protection against side effect risks. Again, we have seen this anecdotally in some members who have moderate to light side effects on oral finasteride, and then they switch to these topical formulations. Some of them do report resolution, some of them don't. But is this due to substantially lower circulating finasteride levels? Or instead, is it due perhaps to the nocebo effect of finasteride, and then the placebo effect that gets triggered by a finasteride formulation switch, where you think that you might be protecting yourself from side effects, but you might not be. We have really limited data. We actually can't answer this question. So uh, you can make the argument in either direction. So I'm going to let you decide how you feel about these higher strength formulations, the arguments, and the science supporting them. But if you are looking for standard dose topical finasteride, you can look no further than nearly all telehealth brands. We're talking Hims, Keeps, Roman, Strut, Happy Head, and even Ulo. We offer this as well. Each brand has its specific offerings, its adjuvant ingredients, and its active ingredients. So explore your choices. And remember, if you are tolerating a dose of finasteride this high without side effects, you really might want to consider trying oral finasteride. Again, the ease of use increases dramatically and you get that broader scalp coverage that hasn't fully been teased out yet with topical applications. So all in, here's where I currently land on topical finasteride dosing. Both low dose and standard doses of topical finasteride, they work, but your doses need to align with your goals for regrowth and your tolerance for systemic absorption. The low dose formulations, they might better localize the drug to the scalp, which could mean fewer side effects but also potentially less regrowth. The standard dose formulations, they generally produce better regrowth, but they're also going to go systemic, similar to oral finasteride. Even still, there's a possibility that they may carry a lower side effect risk versus the oral formulations. But again, the science is out on this. So if you're interested in low dose finasteride, you can make it at home, but it is tricky. For those in the US, you can check out Ulo, the only telehealth provider that we know of currently offering those low dose formulations. And for standard doses, Ulo and other major telehealth brands have you covered. You can check it out. You can discuss it with your doctor. Keep in mind that oral finasteride, it really does carry a relatively low risk of side effects overall. And if I were to guess standard strength topical finasteride, perhaps it further cuts down those risks of side effects by maybe 25 to 50% relative to the oral dose while low dose topical finasteride could maybe cut that risk down further another 50 to 75%. With more robust clinical studies, we'll hopefully know the answers at some point. Lastly, if you are going to commit to topical finasteride, please remember that the results really take time. Clinical studies show that peak results, they don't come at month three, at month six. They take 18 to 24 months to fully manifest. That's two years of consistent use. So stay patient, stay committed to this process, set realistic expectations. I hope this video has helped clarify which topical dose might be right for you. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time.